right, Ms. Nicole, do you have the ability to take over? Are you able to co-host and share and everything? Am I on? Oop, let me turn up my volume. Nicole, are you able to co-host and take over? Screen share and do all the stuff you need to do? Diego. Yes, no. Anybody hear me? Okay. Can you hear me? No. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I can. Now we can. We can hear. Thank you. Nicole, are you able to take over? Sure. I just missed. I don't know why I couldn't hear anything earlier. I don't know. Me either. We'll okay. sort it out now. Um, I'm just going to kind of sit here and, and admit people as we go. Nicole, you're going to take over. I'm going to have you introduce yourself. We have some new people on the line. We have some new people on our team. Um, okay. I'm going to be keeping track of all their attendance and stuff because I've threatened my older swimmers to attend. Um, and we'll work on that. So swimmers, make sure there's one person on here that says iPhone. That's not going to cut it. Change the name. Put your face up a little bit. You know, again, participate. Something that just says iPhone, like I said, it's not good enough on this. We need to know who you are, give you credit for being here. Um, this is our first nutrition chat for the season. Uh, Coach Nicole is here, going to go over a lot of stuff with, especially school. So I'm hoping that you guys have some experiences so far being back in school and getting back to practice and trying to figure out how to balance the two things, because it is the biggest challenge that you face. So uh, meeting is being recorded. There's a lot of people in here, which is good. Uh, Nicole's going to give you plenty of time to ask some questions. Please have those. This is going to help this, these meetings evolve and progress throughout the season, the more participation we get from your end. So I'm going to mute now and give control to Nicole. Awesome. Um, share screen is available. I think I see it. Okay, great. Um, Let's go. All right, guys, um, for the new people who have never met me or seen me in any of these presentations, my name is Nicole. I am a certified nutrition coach. Um, I primarily work with, um, not primarily, but I work with a lot of athletes, whether it's teen athletes like yourself um, who are competing at a higher level, or I work with some triathletes who are endurance athletes who are adults and kids but so we are going to focus on today specifically school year strategies how to plan and prep because we're going to go through some of the things that we've already discussed about but now that your year is changing we kind of look at this as a new year not that January 1 isn't but you're starting a whole new schedule so the time that you had over the summer whether that was if you were you know in camp camps or in practice over the summer, the schedule changes. So we need to account for that and how we're going to adapt and be successful for the new school year. School year. So we're going to go through some of that. But before we get started, I want to start today um, because it is the first one of the season. If you guys have any questions before we get started. So usually we'll ask questions at the end, which we will today ask questions at the end. But I wanted to make sure we can touch on any questions that you have right now um, outside of this topic. So we usually go through a topic and we ask questions at the end, but if you have any nutrition topics or questions that you have right here out the gate, we want to get your involvement. We wanna get your participation and making sure that we are touching on all the things that you have questions about or want to learn more about. So does anybody have any questions right now? You can unmute yourself. You can drop it down into the chat. Um, any questions you have right now, feel free to speak up before we get started in today's specific topic. 
I'd prefer it if you unmuted because the, the viewing's a little different. So rather than typing it in to the chat, if you want to just unmute and ask a question right now is going to be perfect. Nothing? All right, well, then I guess we're just going to get, we're going to jump right into it. Um, so we're going to go through everything, um, some strategies, some tips, some planning, some preparation, looking at your schedule and how to kind of navigate those changes through the year. Um, and then you guys can ask more questions at the end. Okay, so the outline we're going to talk about today is planning and preparation. There are two different things. We want to talk about how we're going to plan. And then after you plan, how to execute that plan with preparation. Um, and then school and practice, how to strategize nutrition for both. So your days are really filled up. You're at school all day long. And then some of you may leave school and go straight to practice. Some of you may have a couple hours in between where you go home. So we're going to talk about um, how to plan looking ahead into your week, because now that you're at this level and the school year started, you can't just assume it's going to happen for you. We want to take a little bit more initiative in the kitchen with the planning, with your parents, your caregiver, whoever's, whoever's helping you at home with your groceries and with the food that you're bringing for school. How can you get involved and start making those decisions and being a part of that decision making um, and help because you need to take a little bit of initiation initiative for yourself and what is going to keep you successful. So first, we're going to talk about planning our nutrition. So you need to talk about a schedule. So you've got a brand new schedule in front of you. Most everybody should have started school at this point. So you should have a pretty good idea about when you're going to school, where your snack breaks are, when lunch is, when after school is, when practice starts. So the first thing you want to talk about with our schedule is planning that out. So look at a, maybe make yourself a list. Look at the times. When's breakfast? When's your next snack? When is lunchtime? When's the snack after lunchtime? When's the snack pre-workout? When is workout? When is after workout? How far is dinner away from that? So making a plan as far as you're making a schedule and mapping that out is really important because you don't want to show up to school with just enough to get you through lunch and then we're hungry and then now we're, we're behind on our hunger. We're behind on our nutrition. It's not going to set you up for a great swim later in the afternoon. So it's, we got to really kind of try to look at your new schedule and what that looks like in a day. Are you packing a lunch? Are you buying a lunch? Are you packing snacks? Are you buying snacks in a vending machine? Do you stop at a subway? Do you stop at a Smoothie King? What does that look like? So if some of us are packing lunch, then you want to make sure you've got everything that you need in the house to pack your lunch. Are you packing snacks? Or are you going to the vending machine? If you are going to the vending machine, maybe this year we start packing our snacks, making a little bit of a smarter decision. And if you know that in the past you've packed your lunch and you've packed snacks with your lunch, but then come lunchtime you eat all of the food at once, then maybe you start packing a little bit more. So starting to fight, figure out um, maybe a sandwich at lunch with two sides or two snacks with that sandwich maybe isn't enough. And then you start dipping into afternoon snacks. So start planning how much you need to actually bring. It may be maybe overpack. So we need to start thinking about packing our lunches, buying our lunches and what that looks like. How much to bring. Don't eat all your snacks at lunch. Make sure to bring enough like what I just said. So I know I'm working with a teen athlete right now and he is, he knows in the past, he would run out of snacks after lunchtime. And then he'd get to practice. He was a football player. He'd get to practice and he's starving. He's having a hard time making it through that practice because he didn't pack enough. He, he ate everything in one sitting. So we want to make sure you're getting enough, you're bringing enough, or you have the healthy options at school and how to identify those healthy options just so you can plan ahead, set yourself up for success and not find yourself hungry in the middle of the day or at the end of the day when you're out of food. The timing. So again, we've talked about this in the past about nutritional timing and how important this is. So we want to, as athletes, as teens especially, your metabolisms, metabolisms are running at such a high level I don't know if you remember if you guys were home all summer, how many times did you 
go into the pantry and open it up or go into the refrigerator and open it up. You're constantly hungry. You're burning so much energy. You're burning so many calories that your bodies require a lot of food. So every three to four hours at least is how much you should be taking or how often you should be eating. So depending on your school schedule, you know, if maybe you're waking up and you're having breakfast around 730 and then you're eating lunch around 1130, there needs there a lot of times should be a snack in between there or at least after there before three o'clock. You need to have a snack in between those three big meals and we'll go into the nutritional timing of your practices and how to plan for the pre-workout, the post-workout. So making sure you're getting every something in your body, fueling your body every three to four hours is going to be really important to stay on ahead of your hunger and ahead of your nutrition because we don't want to go into these big practices hungry or fatigued, which means that we didn't get enough and our body is feeling the fatigue of not getting enough energy source through calories. So making sure that you're bringing all of those things with you to school is going to be really, really important. Take initiative. It's not going to happen on its own. So this is y'all's opportunity. Now that the school year is just starting, you can create some new habits, get a little bit more involved, take a little bit more time to pay attention to what you're going to eat, when you're going to eat it, what that snack's going to look like after breakfast, what that snack's going to look like after lunch, before practice. So helping parents, whoever's doing the shopping for you or with you at home, helping them getting involved in, hey, I want this, 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 and this. I know that I'm going to need this protein before this practice this afternoon or, you know, organizing your lunches, organizing your snacks. It's going to, you need to kind of get involved in help this year. So making a list, I'm such a list maker. I like to be able to check my boxes. So this is usually the best way to kind of get organized. I tell people, I tell all of my clients, regardless if they're athletes or not, when you're starting to focus on your nutrition, it's like starting your first day at school or your first day on a new job, you need to get organized, get your ducks in a row, make yourself a list. So we're going to go through an example of how you can plan a week or plan a day to be successful, set yourself up for success. So weekly planning. Example one, organize a breakfast. So if you may be aren't used to eating breakfast or, you know, past school years, you're eating something in the car, something on the bus, something on your way to school. Maybe this year, it's a good time to start waking up maybe 15 minutes earlier and actually sitting down and eating a good, well-balanced breakfast. So, but before you can sit down and eat that breakfast, you need to organize, what are you going to have? So when you wake up, and you brush your teeth and you come downstairs and it's ready, you're ready to eat breakfast. You want to know you've got what you want. You've got a plan. I've made a plan. So for example, here, we're going to have a whole wheat bagel. We're going to make some scrambled eggs and I'm going to have a, a, some fruit, whether that's a banana, some berries, an apple, but at least, you know, when you're coming into the kitchen, before you go to school, you've got a plan because a lot of times if you don't have a plan, it's really easy to grab that Pop-Tart, but that Pop-Tart isn't doing us any good in the morning. So if you can get something well-rounded, like a complex carb, some good protein, whether that's a smoothie, some eggs, a protein shake, and then your fruit, it's going to be, it's going to set you up for a way better breakfast. So planning out your week with a list, here would be an example of breakfast. Then decide on what you're going to have for lunch. Are you going to have a school lunch? Have you looked at the menu? Are you going to do buy your lunch at school? Or do you need to pack something? Are we going to do a turkey wrap with carrots and hummus? Maybe a side salad. Maybe it's a chicken sandwich. Maybe you're having leftovers from the night before. Um, but speaking of lunch, you want to look ahead at the menu. So I know a lot of times we're buying lunch at school and that's totally fine. That makes it easy. You don't have to worry about packing a lunch box a mini cooler, any of that stuff, everything's going to be at school for you. But not every day at school lunch may be the healthiest option or the best thing to have in your stomach before you go through the rest of your day. Maybe it's a red beans and rice on Monday. The beans is probably not going to be the best thing to have sitting on your stomach before you go to practice that afternoon. Or if it's fried chicken on Tuesday, that's probably not the best thing to have on your stomach before practice that day. So if you can look at your school menu ahead of time, 
I'm sure they give it to you at least a week out. You can organize your week, organize your list based off of what the school's offering. Or at least give you, you can look at it, look at it and be prepared to make the better choice, knowing what's going to be there when you get there. Or knowing what you need to maybe bring in addition to supplement. So maybe they do have grilled chicken sandwiches or they have like a deli bar and you can get a great sandwich, but they don't have enough healthy sides. So maybe you need to bring a yogurt, some hummus, a fruit or something to have a long side, whatever the, the lunch is bringing. So taking that initiative to look ahead, plan ahead is gonna be really important. Next, snacks. Again, we talked about this a couple of slides prior. You want to make sure you have enough. You don't want to run out of food all at once. So making sure you're looking at, you're making your list with your parents, whoever's doing the grocery shopping with you, say, I know that I'm going straight to practice and I need to make sure I have a snack packed for after practice. So maybe that's a protein shake or I need to have a snack packed for before practice. Maybe that's a banana and some peanut butter or a banana and peanut butter sandwich or an RX bar. If you're not bringing a lunchbox and you wanna make sure it's something that you don't need to keep cold, getting a nice healthy protein bar is gonna be really important. So planning ahead, making sure you have enough things to get you through a full day and you're not running out and you don't have to run into the vending machine and grab Skittles or something because we need we always can find a better choice. All right, so that was your planning. Let's talk about, so now we've got a plan. You've made your list, you've organized maybe a shopping list or your menu for the week with your parents. And you've talked about, okay, so maybe Monday night we're cooking this. I can take some leftovers for lunch. You've got a plan as far as what you're eating for the week. Now let's talk about preparing it because that's not gonna happen on its own either. So again, talking about getting organized just like you had to get organized with school supplies or a school uniform, um, making sure you get to school with the right folders, the right binders, the right notebooks and all the things that you need. You need to do the same thing for your food, making sure you're set up for success and you're all planned and you're prepared to start. So organizing the refrigerator, helping organize the refrigerator is really important. If you get home from the grocery store and you know that you want to have some berries with your breakfast, if you help wash those vegetables, wash those fruits so they're ready and they're in your Tupperware or they're in that Ziploc and they're ready to grab in the morning, or maybe you cook it the night before and it's all wrapped up and ready to go, is going to be really important deciding on the next day's menu. What am I having for lunch the next day? Um, just taking a little bit of extra time to plan. I know, sir, I've, I've worked with some people on y'all's team and I know some athletes, they have gotten into the habit of organizing and prepping their own meals and prepping their, their Tupperwares for school. And so when their weeks get started, they can just grab that Tupperware out of the refrigerator and they're ready to go for the week. So starting some of these new habits by getting prepared is going to be really helpful. Start cooking, start helping. If you know you want to have, um, you know, grilled chicken with a baked potato, or you want to have a pasta and that's, you like something that someone cooked for dinner that night and you want to be able to have it for lunch, help, help out in the kitchen. Um, make sure that Maybe you ask for leftovers. You know, I really like tonight's dinner. It's probably going to be great tomorrow. Can I, can you make a little bit extra for me? So having those conversations and then getting those meals prepared is going to be really, really helpful. Same thing goes for hydration. Um, if you're not bringing a water bottle to school, or if you haven't brought a water bottle with you to school in the past and you just wing it through the day. Maybe this year is we start filling a water bottle up before we go to school in the morning or even the night before. Or if you've started taking extra protein powders over the summer and you've increased your protein through a supplement or you started taking BCAAs to help with muscle repair and fatigue and you started that habit through the summer, continue it through the school year but again, it takes that little bit of extra prep. You don't have as much time at home as you did through the summer. So getting those bottles ready, even the night before and having them just sitting in the fridge, those little small things is going to be, again, a game changer so that when 
you're there and you're going to practice and you, you don't have a bottle, you need to grab something, it's already prepared and it's already ready. You've checked that box and you're ready to roll. Questions with meal prep so far? Anybody have any questions? No? Okay. So planning for practices. What time is practice? And how does that timing affect your school? So do you leave straight from school and go straight to practice? Or do you have maybe a couple minutes or a couple hours in between when school lets out and before you go to practice? Figuring out that timing and not just relying on your parents to tell you where to be and when to be there, taking that initiative and staying a little bit more in control of that timing. Because again, we said every three to four hours. And then we've talked about in the past, you want to be eating something for pre-workout, some kind of complex carb to give you that extra energy before you start practice, to give you that extra push to make you go a little bit harder for a little bit longer in these practices. You want to take in a complex carb. So planning what kind of carb I'm going to take in 30 minutes before my swim, 30 to 60 minutes before my swim is going to be really, really important. So finding out where 60 minutes or 30 minutes lands before practice, where are you at that time? Are you at home? Are you getting out of school? Figuring out that time is gonna be really important for how you plan, how you prep the day before, the week before, just getting everything lined up. So knowing where when practice is ahead of time is gonna be important on how you can plan and how you can prep. What snacks do I need? 30 to 60 minutes before practice, complex carb, healthy fat. So a lot of times I tell my teen athletes or any of my teen nutrition clients who are doing an extracurricular after school, like swim, football, any kind of sport. If you get out of school, let's say around three o'clock, you wanna be eating almost like another meal, like another lunch, a small lunch, but maybe it's another sandwich. Maybe it's a smaller portion of maybe a leftover you had the night before. Maybe it's a big smoothie. Um, something that's pretty bulky in calories, you're gonna need because if you finished school at three, maybe you had lunch at 11, maybe you didn't have time to get a snack in, maybe school doesn't allow you to get a snack in. When you get home from school, you're gonna need a, you need a, something pretty beefy in calories. Um, we're talking like three to 500 calories after school, a small, a, about a meal for y'all. Um, and then deciding what kind of macro, those carbs, the proteins, the fat for pre-practice, pre-workout, you want to take in a carb and a fat. The carbs are your fuel. That's your energy. That's the gas you're putting in your, in your car. So a sandwich, a whole fruit, um, something complex like whole grains, oatmeal, granola, something like that's going to be really important. It's going to keep you fueled and feeling your best for those workouts. How far away is dinner? So let's say you finish your practice, but you know dinner's not for another hour and a half, two hours, depending on how far away do you live from practice? Are you driving an hour? If you're driving an hour, you should probably take in some protein. Protein is your post-workout, post-workout protein within 30 minutes post. So a lot of times um, I will have my clients who are working out and they know they got to travel a little bit or they've got some time before their next big meal after their workout, pack a protein shake, stop for a smoothie. Um, I think back in July, we talked about, um, we went into nutritional timing a lot and we talked about, I know a lot of y'all will stop off at the Smoothie King by practice. So making sure you're making that smart order with the protein, getting a protein focused post swim, post practice snack is gonna be really important. Even if you're going into dinner an hour, an hour and a half later, getting in that extra little bit of protein afterwards is gonna be really important because the protein is what is fueling the muscles. You just worked, say, hour, two hours, three hours of work. You want to optimize that workout. So if you have, if you do this workout, you push yourself to the limit, you know this is a really strong workout for you, and you get out of that pool and go eat a bag of chips, that's doing absolutely nothing. You're not fueling, you're not recovering, you're not replenishing your muscles. But if you were to go take in a smoothie 
or pack a little protein shake with you in your bag and have that after practice, you will start seeing and feeling the results of muscle gain, muscle enhancement, muscle growth, muscle repair. It's a, it's a, the protein post-workout will be a huge game changer for y'all. So planning ahead to make sure you're getting that snack post is going to be really important for how you're optimizing those workouts and making sure if you're pushing yourself to the limit, you want to make sure you're holding on to all that strength you just gained. So by bringing that snack with you is going to be really, really important. Again, it's going to take some planning though. You want to make sure you can't have that snack. You can't have that protein post-workout if you didn't bring it with you. So going back to your planning, going back to your preparation, you've got to plan for that workout. You've got to plan for that post-workout snack, and then you got to prepare it. You got to put it together. You got to stick it in your bag. You got to make sure it's in the house for you to bring. Questions? How are we doing? Someone in the chat asked, uh, what brand of protein shakes do you recommend? So for on the go, like pre-made store-bought protein shakes, I really like the Fairlife core proteins. You can get them in, I think, three different protein levels. So you can get a four pack of the small eight ounce ones that are 24 grams of protein. It's 130 calories. So when you're finishing a workout somewhere 20 to 30 grams is going to be the perfect amount of portion of protein for post. So those little guys are great. Um, Iconic makes a great one as well. Um, now, if you don't have anywhere to keep it cold, if you don't mind drinking a little bit warmer, that's fine. You can. There's also some powders. You could always put it in a protein shaker if you've got the powdered protein and mix it with water afterwards and shake it up. So Iconic also makes a powder. You can get it at Rouse's. It's my go-to just because it's easy It's easy access. I don't need to go to GNC. I don't need to order it online. It's at the grocery store. So Iconic makes a great one as well. And it, it doesn't taste chalky. Um, whey protein is great for workout recovery. Whey doesn't always sit great on everyone's stomach. Some people have some issues digesting whey, but Iconic is 99% lactose free. You can get the big, great bang for your buck as far as protein grams, and it's really easy on, for digestion purposes. Those are my two go-tos. When you're looking, let's go back to the protein. So when you're looking at a protein, guys, the reason you're taking in a protein shake or a protein powder is you're supplementing your protein intake. So you're getting protein with things like lean meats, eggs, um, some beans, legumes, those types of things. But if you need to supplement your protein, that's when you would want to take in like a shake or a protein powder. And now to find a good protein powder, when you flip that label over and you look at the label, you want that protein to be, when you're looking at grams across that label, you want the protein to be the biggest number. You want your fats and your carbs to be under five grams. Because here's the deal, is if you are buying a protein supplement, you don't want to waste this protein supplement on carbs and fats that you could be chewing and eating and taking in other places. Does that make sense? So I don't want to buy a protein powder where I'm getting 20 grams of protein, but I'm also getting 15 grams of carbs. Because then you could turn around and just eat a sandwich, have a meal, because you can eat those carbs and eat those fats somewhere else. So if you're supplementing, whatever that supplement is, it should, that supplement should just be very highly concentrated in the thing that you're supplementing. So that's how you can kind of start. If you go to Whole Foods or GNC or the grocery store and you're looking for a protein, a quick glance, way to see if it's a good protein or you're getting the best bang for your buck there for that supplement is to make sure that that protein is far outweighing the fat and the carb. Other questions? Nicole? Yeah. What are some of the good 
um, whether it's a kind of a protein bar or something that's a good option in the middle of practice. We've got a couple that, whether it's timing or just more caloric needs yeah. or poor planning, sometimes need in a two and a two to two and a half hour block or needing to eat something in the middle of all of that. So in those types of settings, um, something like a, a protein bar, I'm not a huge, I don't push bars very often because usually we can get, um, when you're looking at a bar, they're usually around 200 calories. Most protein bars that y'all find at the grocery store, like the RX bars, um, the Quest bars, those types of things, they're usually around 200 calories. And 200 calories can usually get you a pretty decent amount of real food on a plate. But for this type of setting, a bar like an RX bar, um, you wanna then look at the carbs. You want those bars or something like that to be higher in a carb. So again, the carb is your gas. That's your energy. That's going to give you the extra kick in the butt to go a little bit harder, give you that energy boost. So something that's a little bit carb heavy. So if you want a bar, I really like the RX bars and I like the, the perfect bars for y'all's demographic as far as teen athletes. Um, Another great thing would be, because some of those, depending on your stomach, everybody's stomach kind of sits a little different, um, a banana or a piece of fruit, because like an apple or a banana, those whole pieces of fruit are very carb dense. And because it's fruit and it has the fast act, it's got sugars in it. So it's again, going to give you a little bit of a pushing your energy level, but it's sometimes a little bit easier to digest in the stomach than a bar. For some people, those bars sit a little heavy. And I know everybody's a little different about, I can't eat before practice. It makes me feel a little lethargic or I get a little nauseous. So something like a banana is going to be really great as well. And I know I've shared, um, if you guys go onto the new wave team site, I've shared, or on the Instagram page, I've shared the peanut butter ball, oat ball recipe, something like one of those in the middle of practice is going to be great as well, because the oats are going to be a fast lasting carb. The fat is going to give you the extra little energy boost and fueling boost as well. For those that need to eat a little bit more, is, are, is this useful? I don't know what that is. E-fuel. What is no. that? All right. What is it? I'll have Shannon explain it or send you her reviews on it because she's the one that just handed it to me. Oh, great. What is the, if you flip over the, the label for me, read the calories and the serving size. 70. And then where, what is the carb on it? 17. And then protein and fat? Zero. So that would be something that you could, yes. So that's a carb. Um, that would be like an energy carb. So especially those of you who don't like to eat anything, but you know, you need the extra push of calories. So something like that in your water bottle would be a great calorie enhancement without feeling like you need to chew something, but you're going to be getting calories in your hydration. That would be something great. Um, I saw a question of far, as far as what brand of BCAAs do you recommend? Um, there are a couple brands out there. The one that we currently have in our pantry, I think it's by Optimum Nutrition. When you look at a BCAA, honestly, most of them are going to be fine. Um, Optimum Nutrition makes a great one. Be careful. Make sure you don't get the one that says energy on it. Make sure there's no added caffeine. You guys, at, at this point, I don't recommend you guys taking in any pre-workout or any additional caffeine in any of your supplements or any of your hydration. Um, so the Optimum Nutrition is the one that we have that we like. It tastes great. The nutritional timing for BCAAs isn't super important. Um I like to take it during a workout. I usually will have some in my water bottle or post-workout if I'm hydrating after my workout. 
you don't need to take it. It doesn't have any new real nutritional timing as far as like we talked about carbs, pre protein, post, um, it really can be taken at any point. So if you just like your water to taste a little fruity and you want to be able to put in BCAAs at some point, you can put it in your water bottle at school. You can put it in your water bottle at practice. Um, the nutritional time in there. There's some that have BCAA supplements that include an additional hydration, which that would be really, really helpful to have with you during practice to make sure you're taking in the extra hydration. Um, but the nutritional timing for that isn't terribly important. Good questions. Keep them coming. Anything else? Did um, questions about oh go ahead sorry uh if you have a morning practice as well as an afternoon practice how should we schedule that okay so tell me um a little bit more about the timing of that so what time is practice and what time are you going to school um practice is uh 5 45 in the morning that's when it starts and it ends around uh seven and then school starts seven forty five. You're going basically straight from practice to school? Yes. Okay, cool. So this would, you would have to probably plan like a on the go situation or maybe pick something up on your way to school after practice. So pre-practice, if it's at 545, you should be taking something in within those 30 minutes. So somewhere around 515. And again, something like... Um, a bagel, like a whole wheat bagel with peanut butter would be awesome. Um, they, I really like the, there's Vans waffles or the Kodiak waffles. It's just like in the freezer section at the grocery store. Two of those would be great. So you want to make sure you're getting a nice beefy carb in, um, some instant oatmeal, some, make sure your instant oatmeals though are low in sugar, but an instant oatmeal, um, would be perfect pre-workout for an early morning practice like that. So you make sure you're getting enough of the complex carbs. And then, and that I would say is within 30 minutes, then you finish practice, either pack yourself um, one of those big shakes or maybe stop and pick up a smoothie, a nice like big meal replacement smoothie if you can, um, because then you'll make sure you're getting enough protein post. And then you kind of, between the two of them, you've combined to a pretty solid breakfast. So it's almost like you're gonna take a breakfast and split it in half. Take your carbs in beforehand and then take your protein afterwards. But because it's on the go, something like a big meal replacement smoothie would be great for post practice like that. Does that help? Yes, thank you. Cool. Um, I see a question about, do you know any good ways of coming up with good meal ideas? Yeah. Um, decide what you're in the mood for. What do you really like? Don't tell me it's fried chicken or pizza because we could probably find something better, but um, going online and searching um, for great meal ideas. I can do, I can also give you, I'm gonna, I'll, I can go on, we post this presentation onto the website. I'll post two of my favorite um, dinners, dinner meals. Um, now, when you're thinking about, are you talking about specifically dinner? Are you talking about bre uh, breakfast, lunch? When you're talking about meals, Lee, Raymond, what um, what meal are you specifically looking for? Because I can go ahead and post like a breakfast recipe, a lunch recipe, and a one dinner recipe on the page if that would be helpful for y'all to try. Some of my go-tos. Like a like a. Like a what? Sorry, say it again. Oh, like a dinner type meal. Perfect. Yeah. So um, whatever your preference is, I mean, if you like, for example, if you like burgers, um, maybe this, this time when you make burgers, try to switch it into a getting ground turkey and getting a better meat option. Um, so some of my go-tos that we make a lot of are, we do a lot of turkey burgers, um, one of the first recipes that I send to all of my 
nutrition clients is a turkey taco bowl because everybody likes Mexican. Most people love tacos. So you can get, instead of doing ground red meat, you want to focus on a leaner, better meat, a better protein like turkey. So you can buy ground turkey, use a packet of low sodium taco seasoning, black beans. Um, I'll roast up some diced sweet potatoes to get my complex carb, add any veggies you want to add in, and you can make turkey tacos, a bowl, like a burrito bowl. Um, those are two of my, my go-tos right now. And they also make great leftovers. Like if you make a batch of burgers, those will last you all week. Um, what about gluten-free food for my boy, Addison? Gluten-free food. So um, oatmeal is a great gluten-free option. There's plenty of gluten-free breads out there right now. Um, and then finding grains that are gluten-free. So um, brown rice, quinoa, finding those, those complex carbs without um, going the gluten route. Um, you can load up on fruits and vegetables to get in the good carbs without gluten. Those are all going to be great options. Beans, chickpeas, those are all great sources of carbs and protein that are all going to be gluten-free. Anyone else? And right now you can do most, I find that there's so many because you're, we're finding more and more people that are gluten intolerant, that a lot of these brands, there's um, a lot of great gluten-free options right now, especially in the refrigerated or frozen section at the grocery stores. Um, there's a lot of great options out there for gluten-free. Anyone else? Sorry if y'all can hear my dog barking. Anyone? Coach gave me the thumbs up. Does anybody else have any other questions? Um, so I will, this will get posted on the website. I will post two, um, a couple recipes for some, switch up some meals. Um, and then y'all please reach out if you have any other questions about, you know, how should I prep? What kind of brands, if you have any brand questions as far as brands of protein or those types of things like we mentioned tonight, um, feel free to reach out. Yep, and I told a couple of mine to, if there's certain things that they know they like and need at practice to get plenty of it and we can keep it at the pool. Um, we've got some storage areas and stuff. If so, if there's certain, whether it's a protein bar or even if it's a, powdered mix or something like that, that I can yeah, that'd help be great. keep stuff there. Yeah, just because that's going to be the, honestly, guys, when y'all are talking about planning and prepping, it's just making sure that you have it. Because if it's not there and you don't have it, that's when things can go sideways, right? And we start grabbing for the vending machine or grabbing the bag of chips or grabbing the Snickers bar. Um, so if you plan it ahead of time and you have it there, you can't mess up. Just making sure that it's there and you've got it in the back pocket. I can't tell you, it, all of my bags, if you open my glove box in my car, I've got snacks everywhere, just in case. Cause you don't wanna be, you know, in a position where you really, really, you're, you need it. You wanna stay on top of it, just like your hydration. You wanna stay ahead of your hunger. You wanna keep putting logs on the fire. Sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Awesome. Y'all have a great rest of your night and I will talk to y'all soon. Thank Thanks, you. Nicole. Bye. Thank you.